Hello and welcome back to the Engerati studio here at uh, European Utility Week. And I, I'm joined now in the studio by uh, Gabriel Reedman de Trinidad from uh, uh, T-Systems International. Um, and uh, uh, Gabriel is the SVP of uh, the energy area w uh, within uh, T-Systems. And firstly, Gabriel, thank you for making the time. Uh, it's, it's very late in the day. It doesn't translate over there, but uh, uh, um, uh, everybody's been on their feet for uh, probably a good solid eight hours now. Uh, so it must be quite nice to sit down for a bit. Uh, <laughs> uh, but again, thank you for making the time. And we were talking a little bit off air about um, uh, what T-Systems are doing in this space. And uh, to tie it back to your booth, it's, it's quite fascinating that you've actually got a live feed coming into the booth with uh, what were you saying 50 million uh, yeah. yeah we're doing the German stress test <laughs> you're doing this German stress <laughs> test live on the booth <laughs> in Amsterdam yeah <laughs> That's, uh, uh, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, and uh, 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 what are you showing there? Uh, 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 what are you hoping to show the potential customers who are uh, walking on that they should be thinking about? I think if you really need to step into this new world, you need to handle big data. Mm. And big data is something from, uh, from, from a telco point of view, is something we are handling every day. And we can translate this vision in, 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 into the utilities mm. world. And you think, uh, do you think that the utilities world is actually ready to handle big data the way you know, telcos are doing or, or, or some of the other big st uh, data stories where you look at someone like Amazon with the Elastic Cloud, the, the, the amount of data that they're processing. Uh, are these guys ready for it? How many times are your meters read out? Uh, once, probably. Yeah. So reading it out every 50 minutes produces 35,000 data sets multiplied by 50 million, for instance, Germany. I don't think that they can handle right now because they are used to one value a year. We are doing 100 million data sets to just uh, get our network stable in Germany. And does that mean that, the, the, you know, is that part of the justification equation of the, uh, uh, of the smart grid that actually there's no point installing this stuff unless you can uh, in, uh, install an ecosystem that can make sense of this data. Otherwise, you're just putting stuff in that spits out 15 readings a minute, but you're only using one? One wouldn't be for sure enough. Just right. imagine we have this very nice cloud. It wouldn't wait for one value a yeah, day. Yeah. So you would be already out of energy supply if you're running on PV. <laughs> exactly, but, 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 I th but I think the point I'm trying to uh, 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 make is that uh, in a lot of interviews we've had until now, it's, uh, came people are just uh, talking about, uh, oh, uh, we've got to install smart meters, we've mm -hmm. got to install smart meters, we've got to install smart meters, but how, how much uh, realization is there that actually that's just one part of the jigsaw? You, d you also got to in tandem figure out what you're going to do with this data both for a customer conversation and uh, everything else. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you have on the one hand the customers which uh, the first time in their life the transparency on, on, on the consumption. So if you ask anybody how much you're paying for your fuel per, uh, per liter, anybody would know. I would uh, be surprised that anybody knows here how much they pay for a kilowatt hour at home. Don't even know what a kilowatt hour. You see, <laughs> you know, someone told me I, I, I'm going to give you a kilowatt hour. I was like, well, what can I do with that? Does that mean that that's one? Is that one spin cycle on the washing machine, or, yeah. or what? Yeah, but yeah. this is exactly what our family said to uh, telling us as well when we are talking to them. They tell us, don't talk to me in kilowatt hours. So translate it to me in in, in euros. Tell me how much uh, is my dishwasher con consuming or shall I change my fridge in the way how it is consuming. But for this you need to create transparency. Mm. And, it, uh, and is that what you're able to do right now? Uh, so if someone walked past your booth, you, uh, uh, you'd be able to give them a solution where, hey, listen, you can now send out bills where you say your washing machine costs you this many euros, your toaster is costing you this. We are champions in making bills, you know. <laughs> this is the nice thing on telco. So yes. if, if you have ever received a telco bill, so we can bill basically on anything. Yeah. So 
independently if this is volume and, and, and so on. So this is something, yes, we can do. And you, uh, so you're, you're taking all the learning that, uh, that you've done in the telco and mobile space and, uh, and applying it to uh, a utility space? Yes, because I think, the, I think there are a lot of similarities because mm. on, 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 on the one hand, utilities need to learn to, tell, uh, to tie some products to the commodity business electricity or gas. Mm. If not, you're just in competition with pricing. This is something we needed to learn as well as Deutsche Telekom. Mm. And on the other hand, you need to learn how to handle big data. Mm. And uh, so the obvious question is, why aren't utilities doing this? Well, I, I think in a lot of cases uh, or in a lot of places, they're waiting for regulation to uh, see as well how this uh, huge amount of money that needs to be invested uh, can be translated. So this is, uh, I, I think, one major blocking point. And I, I think as well, a little bit of a pity we never agreed in Europe on some standards. So, so every country is working on an own standard, which inhibits a little bit as well communication. So, so, the, so the standards question again. A, a few other interviewees mentioned that mm -hmm. it, 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 is, uh, it sounds like that's a significant roadblock that really needs to be solved. Yeah. But we can't even agree on a fiscal standard, let alone something as complex as that. Or are we actually closer to solving this standard? I, I wouldn't say so. I think we have no standards and uh, my vision would be to learn a little bit from the telcos because uh, 20 years, years ago the telcos in Europe decided that GSM will become the mobile network mm. standard. So now meanwhile you can use your phone wherever you go and it's working, which is quite nice. Even if you're a prepaid customer, you're getting built, uh, even if you're in South Africa. And I, I think this is what we need to reach as well, at least on European level. And uh, is there any move to, to getting there? I mean, you, you sound a little bit kind of bit disillusioned because you're saying, look, we, we did this 20 years ago in a not dissimilar market. Uh, uh, you sound a bit like, why aren't, we, why aren't we doing it here? Well, actually, there are very, very well established protocols like IP, yes. <laughs> which <laughs> would help. Yeah. So I don't think we need to find a new standard. Yeah. So if we just to agree on, 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 well, on, on using standards yeah. available, yeah. would be already great. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's use IPv6. Yeah. Uh, let's yes, go exactly. For it. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that, that's a very fair point. I suppose someone just has to say, well, this is the one yeah. and then uh, and then that's it. Uh, I feel a big summit coming on <laughs> between, uh, between all the uh, utilities. Um, one of the other questions I asked is, is, do you see the potential where, and it, and it seems to be a recurring point in the interviews mm -hmm. where people are saying, well, look, uh, the uh, utilities need to get better at interacting with their customers. And, 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 and always the reference point that's, that's been said is, mm -hmm oh, like the telcos do, or, mm -hmm. or like great retailers, you know, uh, 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 case study out of the UK, like Tesco's, mm -hmm. you know, really uh, uh, done that. Can you see a, a point where a telco actually takes over a utility because they say, listen, we know how to do this. <laughs> There's clearly a significant advantage to being able to do that. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to take forever to be able to get to there. Let, uh, we're going to buy this utility and we're going to make market. I think we go a little bit a different path. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we love to enable our partners, which are the utilities, yeah. because and uh, honestly speaking, even Deutsche Telekom as an incumbent managed to, uh, to do end customer business. And, yeah. and even so we have uh, fierce competition in, 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 in Germany on, on, on the telco market. Yeah. In a lot of places, we are still number one. Yeah. So yes, you can turn around, you can manage. And this learning, we want to give to the utilities. Good. Well, okay. <laughs> so not, not, not buying a utility no. anytime soon. No, no, okay. no. Well, no. Uh, we are not really good in energy <laughs> stuff. <no. laughs> no, we handle energy. data. We yeah. love to handle yeah, data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love communication. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, not, not a bad thing. Uh, we're, co we're coming close to uh, at the end of our time here uh, uh, in the studio, and, I, and I'm asking all my guests this, and uh, um, it's a little bit of a personal question mm -hmm. to you. Um, I mean, y you've been here for uh, well, two days now. Mm -hmm. 
what would be the one highlight that you personally think, actually, th that's a great thing. It's great that I'm seeing this, uh, either new technology mm -hmm. or, 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 or a new trend. Uh, do you have something like that? The greatest thing I experienced the last two days, that's why I have already some problems with my voice, was the feedback from our customers. That's they great. really love the concept. And the concept. Total cost of ownership, mm. uh, really taking away the risk, uh, taking away the costs of transmitting data, of handling big data. So, so you just take away all that pain point for them, yes. and and it's it's like buying an yeah. off. Well, it's probably not as simple as buying an off the shelf solution, yeah. but as close to yeah. that. When w you know when we started two years ago as Deutsche Telekom Group. So people were thinking like, is Deutsche Telekom entering into the utilities business? No, we have no clue. Mm. But I, I, I think meanwhile, within, in, in two years, building up the solutions, taking away a lot of risks and pains for the utilities, I think they realized that it makes a lot of sense to work together with each other. And this is uh, a very nice learning from the last two days. Well, that, that's fantastic. And uh, I'm going to pop over to your stand and see this live stress test in action. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love stuff like that, so I, I, I'll do that tomorrow because uh, it's the end of the day today. Uh, Gabrielle, thank you again for making the time. It was a pleasure to have you in the studio. Uh, and, and thank you as well for watching. There are more interviews on Angerati.com. And uh, uh, we hope to see you at uh, another event we're broadcasting from soon.